Good afternoon, everybody. Harry and I thought we would just jump on and do a bit of an impromptu live and talk about what you can do to keep your business going, surviving and hopefully thriving in this current corona crisis. So what can we do? So remember that most of your clients, most of your customers still have exactly the same problem as they had a week ago, but maybe they've got a slightly different version of the problem or maybe they've got new problems. I can't think of a single business that doesn't have a problem that's been presented by this current virus and, and the, the issues that it's causing. So, but in most cases, in most cases, we hope that your customers still need you. So how can you serve them? What can you do? How can you deliver your products and services remotely or with limited contact. So we've been doing um, a bit of research, we've been talking to our clients and we've been looking at how people are getting around and still working within these current boundaries. So we wanted to share some of these with you to give you maybe a little bit of inspiration or examples. And then what we want you to do is share your experiences with us. How are you coping with the current crisis? What are you doing differently? How are you serving your customers? And let's just help everybody and make sure that we can all grow through this. Yeah. So one of the first things we found is um, we, we have uh, one of our customers is a, a small business. Um, it's not quite a restaurant. It's not quite a cafe. It's kind of somewhere in between. He runs a, a sports club, which, of course, has been completely demolished by this current crisis. So his footfall has completely dropped. But instead of saying, right, OK, that's it. I can't serve beer. I can't you know, serve food. We're all going to go out of business. He started doing um, a, a contactless meal delivery service. So people, his customers can ring up and still um, get the meals cooked. But instead of them come, coming into uh, the community center to go and see him, he's now delivering them to them from his place of work. So still doing the same sort of thing, but he's pushing his stuff out to his customers instead of expecting his customers to come in. Mm. Uh, another one is with physios and therapists. Um, so obviously they can't see clients one-to-one, -one, um, so they're offering variations of their services, uh, such as movement and home exercise routines to help clients basically self-manage their own issues. Yeah, so what I have seen is um, people taking their sort of physio or their osteopathic services uh, offline. Um, I, I know we've got a great acupuncture in, in here who won't be able to acupuncture people and apply needles and things like that. But what she is really good at is showing people how to self-manage their own pain points and do their own self-acupuncture uh, using pressure points. So I've seen her do this in networking groups. Um, she also has... Um, a podcast and she does um, things called Wisdom Mind which help people to manage their sort of mental health and, and serenity and their calmness and that kind of thing. So she has the perfect product to take online and to be sharing with people. So she's already a step ahead of a lot of people that she has an online business that she can share with others. But what can you do in that realm? Now I did over here, um, I did hear on a, a, another friend's um, calls this morning that they were wanting to treat patients remotely and their insurers were happy for them to treat their existing patients remotely but were not happy for them to take on new clients remotely to help them manage their pain they were only interested in the ones that they had previously dealt with one-to-one -one. so if you are going to offer remote services in that respect do check with your insurance company that that is covered so another one is teachers they're taking their lessons online and all schools are also providing online they call them like a work pack uh, for their students to work through via online portals mm. emails etc um tutors are offering um online classrooms for any stay-at-home kids and of course specialist lessons as well yeah, um I so imagine that's going to be quite difficult can you imagine uh, if you're actually doing um online classes or zoom lessons to you know, your students, you've got 30 kids sitting around all looking at their screens. I, I don't know how quite how productive that's going to be, but I do think it's possible. I do think if you get a bit creative and you get online. 
you know that'd be great teachers love it you can mute mute a kid yeah. <laughs> you know, can yeah. do that in the classroom that'd be funny if you could just turn them off uh, perhaps yeah. that'd be better in that respect to have your classes online um, I'm yeah. in a, a number of coaching groups and in those coaching groups we do have that training and the group activity online because we're all scattered all over the country and it works really really well the the trainer delivers their powerpoint online and then we unmute ourselves at the point that we've got a question or you sort of say something in the chat and they might unmute us at the end and we have a q and a but online lessons and online tutorials are really really effective and you're focused because you're looking at the screen you're not looking at you know bob next to you or jill over the road and flicking each other and pinging each other and you know there's no room for mess around you're totally focused looking at each other it's uh, really really quite effective it's a good idea yeah. so tip number four harry what's that um trainers so if you're any trainers out there um Trainers such as Joe Wicks are offering free YouTube course, um, well, YouTube exercise classes, online cookery and uh, nutritional classes. So you can try and balance, if you're doing something similar, you can try and balance a free service with a paid service. So if you've got these various offerings, do mix them up mm. and you can actually use them as lead magnets. So they can be really helpful for driving more traffic, actually. So even if you aren't necessarily getting the income from all of them, they do definitely help drive traffic forward. Yes, yes, definitely. And, and, and I think that's the challenge, isn't it, is how do you get out to your audience and help them solve that problem? So we've got a friend um, called Anne who's, um, she has a Slimmer You club for helping people lose weight or helping business owners lose weight while they're busy during their day. And yesterday she started um, an online evening cooking session where she's showing people how to cook efficiently, um, with low calorie, good quality foods, but within the constraints of, you know, perhaps you might be able to not get some of these ingredients from a local store. So she, I'd imagine she's going to get a lot more creative over the coming weeks with uh, what she's able to do and what material she's been able to pick up. So um, people like developers, coders and IT workers are doing everything that they always did, but they're working from home using VPN or remote login uh, to access their work. So it might be that you have meetings on Skype. Um, you might need some assistance from um, some online IT folks to help you get remote access to your work. And if you haven't done that already and you can't access your online tools, then do look into that. So there's no, if you're finding it difficult to get work done and to be able to move your business forward, talk to an IT person to see what they suggest to be able to give you access to the tools that you need to do the job. And maybe it means just changing some of the tools that you need to do the job. I mean, this is one of the things as accountants have faced us for a long, long time. Yeah, they have. Um, another one is that teams of people are collabor collaborating and basically teams are working together um, using software such as Workplace or Facebook, uh, Workplace by Facebook or Microsoft Teams and um, various Facebook groups. Basically, there's so much software out there we can use, so many apps we can use yeah. to really team collaboration. And it's just how effectively you manage that and make sure that you know exactly what's going on and that everyone's kept in the loop, really. Yeah. I mean, we use Skype a lot, don't we? So um, although uh, Harry, Tom and I are all working from home, we're using Skype to collaborate and talk to each other through the day. So we have a Skype window open in the background so that we can still hear and talk to each other and still throw queries around. Um, but we also do this with our clients. So uh, we have um, Skype windows and Skype groups set up with uh, the majority of our big clients. So if we have any queries, we can just have Skype chats going on through there. So we mm. use chat, Skype, Skype chat in a very similar way to a, a Slack trail. And it's just, we, we find that clients find Skype easier than Slack and most clients have got Skype, whereas they would have to go and get Slack. So Skype works really well for us in this respect. Um, I did see um, a friend of mine has been recommending um, Workplace for Facebook and I did set the account up this week, but I still find Skype is just so much easier. Skype is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is. and it's free so which is really really important wait, now, wait. talking about accountants and bookkeepers now online accountants like us are super prepared for working from home so all of our accounting tools 
Zero is online. We work from a single ledger. Um, we've got Receipt Bank online, Trello, Dropbox. All of our tools are online. So for us, when this crisis hit, we were able to just say, right, OK, we're all sitting together at mine at the moment. That's fine. We'll just all go and sit in our own houses and be socially isolated so that we you know, meet these recommended guidelines. But the point is we were already geared up and ready to go because that's how we work naturally. So when you're looking to work with your clients, what can you do to communicate with them, to collaborate with them, to make their life easy or easier so far as humanly possible with the tools that are currently available. So these tools aren't particularly expensive, but they are really, really effective. Yeah, and one we really like to use, as mentioned briefly earlier, was Trello. Yeah. Um, so we use Trello to manage projects with clients. Um, so basically we can add tasks, we can set checklists, and basically we can leave the client to go and get on with stuff in their own time so that they don't have to do it when they're rushed off their feet. They can do it as and when. And um, everyone can see the updates that's going on. It's really, really good. It's really clean. And it's actually visually, I'd say it's very user-friendly. I um, think so, because you can just like drag a task from one list to another, don't you? So the, the way we use it is we have our list, we have a client list, and then we have a done list. So it's either on your list for you to action, it's on our list for us to action, or it's done. And yeah. that seems to work really, really well and means we can just swipe things between each list as we progress them. So yeah. I would thoroughly recommend if you've got clients or customers or um, suppliers to work with, set up simple management tools to make life easier for all of you. We just None of us have got time for emails and stuff to be left in to-do lists anywhere. We just need to find effective ways of managing our time now. Exactly. Um, now, so... Well, not on this one. I like this next point. Yeah. I'll let you... <laughs> so our, our tip number nine, we, we've heard of vets who are collecting sick animals from customers instead of expecting the customers to sit in a waiting room, which, of course, means they're not socially isolating. Um, or our local vets is greeting the customers in the car park so they can keep safe social distances while the poorly animal is then checked. So the, the customer doesn't actually then have to go into the veterinary practice. Now, one of our clients is taking that a step further and for some months now, they've been developing a video with my vet app, which means that the, vid the vet has the facility to chat to the customer through the phone. So there's an app on the phone where it's linked to their account. So the billing and everything is all taken care of. Um, but it means that the customer can show them their animal without actually having to leave the house. So in times like this, this is absolutely amazing. It could not have come at a better time to help vets do their job. So, of course, they're now pushing that out to the vets to give them the tools to service their clients without putting their customers at risk and keep them socially isolated. So they've been working on this for months and they were in the early stages of launch before this crisis. But now, of course, they're trying to ramp this up because it's a fantastic tool to help people look after their animals in a more safe environment. So what tools, techniques, what processes, what can you do to help your customers resolve their problems in a safe way. Yeah. And it might be that consultants, trainers, business coaches, and there's a lot of these who are taking services online anyway, um, might yeah. be with membership, online courses. And actually, there's a lot we can offer, um, basically, by going online. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and even now, we're, we've, we've been chatting all day, haven't we? Um, and, and planning what we're going to be talking about in Facebook Lives. We've been talking through customer um, challenges and dealing with customers and we've been reviewing emails and that kind of stuff. So it feels different than it did last week, but it's not really because we're still getting the work done. Yeah, it's, so not it's quite interesting. Other than the surroundings, to be honest. <laughs> I would say in this time, now is a really good time. If you've got a product or a service that will help people, it's probably more of a service or a knowledge set, that will help people. Now is the ideal time to start a membership so that you can be talking to and engaging with many people on a one-to-many -many basis, but you don't have that one-to-one -one contact. And again, it's socially safe, but it allows you to still charge a small amount for your service rather than a larger amount for your service and help people move their businesses on and keep them going throughout this current crisis. Yeah, and there's actually an advantage to it financially as well, because if yeah, you can absolutely. do... 
this one to many basis and sell time for money, you can scale it. So um, massively, massively making a difference there. Um, yeah, it might be it actually... also means you're less at risk if one or two people yeah. drop out. So yeah, if exactly. you haven't got you just... all of your income coming in from you know one or two people. So the question is, do you have a unique skill or a knowledge set and perhaps you could package it up, you could teach it through online methods and could you put together, say, a paid membership club? Um, everyone out there, I would say, has a surprising amount of knowledge and skill that they haven't tapped into, um, but it is definitely there. It's just making sure you've branded it, you've packaged it well, and then you've put it out there. Um, that's the thing. Don't put it out there. People can't buy. No, absolutely. So um, talk to us about what you're doing. Tell us what troubles you or what difficulties you've experienced while you've had to be working from home and move your business into your home. Tell us what's working for you. Tell us what's exciting you. Just share with us what's going on. We're really interested to know more about what you're doing and how you're running your business through this current crisis. So that will be enough from us today. And uh, Harry and I will be back on Monday. What we're going to do from Monday is we'll be live in this group at 10 a.m., um, 10 minutes-ish. I'll say ish because we always say 10 minutes and then we talk for longer. <laughs> so 10 minutes from 10 a.m. and we'll be here every day um, giving you the, the best information, the most up-to-date information that we have on the financial element of this current crisis, what you can claim for, what you can't claim for, what other business owners are doing what's working and um, sharing the tools, techniques and information to do that with you. So that's it from us today and we'll speak to you soon. Bye for Bye. now.